reached a thousand followers thanks to you guys. Thank you so much for your support. I'd like to quickly greet a few people. There's lots of support from Europe, from the Netherlands, from Nederland. Nice. There's some from Germany, Deutschland. Nice. There's quite a few from India. Hello, guys. And some from the United States, the US. I've got a few followers from Mexico. I see some people from uh, Iran, from Armenia. There's a few from Greece, Sweden. And there's a couple from Australia as well. Hello, mate. And then there's nice. also uh, Turkey. I'm 27 years old. Um, let's see how long have you kept discus fish? I've known discus fish I think for a bit more than seven years, so about eight years. How many tanks do you have? I've got I lost most of my discus fish last year due to a pandemic, uh, but I had 60 tanks. 65 discus tanks filled with discus fish. Um, then I also have a few uh, tanks now filled with angels, and then I also have quite a few tanks for shrimp. So I think in total I probably have around 100 tanks now. Do you export? No, I do not yet export. Although I would like to supply other countries with discus fish, I do not yet export at this point. Why did you choose the name Discus Divana? So I wanted to choose Discus Diva originally to register in South Africa. So I chose Discus Divana, but also uh, Discus Divana. Divana means crazily in love or very passionate um, in Urdu or Hindi. And strangely enough, I had some clients from uh, India and also some of the local Indians here and the guys that can speak and read Urdu told me that Divana means to be crazy, you're kind of crazy with the discus or you're in love with discus and that kind of suits me. I think I'm a little bit with I love discus fish very very much. I think in a way I'm obsessed with them and um, I, I also like to study their anatomy and a little bit about physiology, a little bit about biology and chemistry and uh, yeah, all the bodily processes of discus fish as well. Okay, next question, where are you from? I am based in South Africa, I am a South African. My parents, my mother is Afrikaans, I think Boer lineage, and then my dad is also Afrikaans, he was born in the Netherlands, I think in Holland, uh, so there's Dutch lineage from his side, but I am, I am proudly South African with proud Dutch lineage. And this one's interesting, how many hours do you spend cleaning your discus per day? So when I had a full operation going, I spent between four and five hours a day cleaning discus. At some point I had some help to clean my facility, and that really helped, thank you. But uh, yeah, now I spend between two and two and a half hours a day cleaning angels and the discus. Do you use, do you use buffers in your fish tanks? No. I stay away from buffers and acids. I do have experience in working with acids and a bit with buffers, but I prefer to work without them. I don't use any buffers at all. This is an interesting one. How many books do you have? I think I've got 27 discus books. I think I've got 27 discus books and then my dad, uh, Gertjan, he has a few articles and so on from back in his day and yeah. Um, I've got some, we've got some articles from in the 80s and the 90s nice. from Eheim. When Eheim made some of their first internal power filters and heaters. So there's those cool articles. I've got some articles from Jack Watley. I've got some, um, the early 2000s books, uh, you know, from Dick Au. I've got some from Dieter Untergasse. This, okay, some of Jack Watley's discus for the perfectionist. And just discus, Jack Watley's discus. Uh, and yeah, this I've got a few books and other authors I did not even mention. Your water parameters my pH always hangs around 6.8 to 7, and my KH is between 1 and 3. 
depending on what I'm doing. Uh, my GH is around 6 to 10. 10 is a bit much. I think 6 is better. Um, connectivity is times 2 to 2.2 .2 of that of TDS normally by me. Um, yeah, and I always keep my discus between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius. Do you use RO in your fish tags? Yes, for my breeding pairs, no matter if it's angels or whatever, I, I use RO water for my breeding tanks. I made a video on that. My TDS is between 60 and 90, depending on um, how tough or how challenging the pair is to breed. What do you feed your discus? I feed a combination of frozen foods. I released a video on that, how to make that some uh, commercial pellets and brine shrimp. I avoid bloodworms and I avoid tuba fix because in South Africa we can't really find a trustworthy source of bloodworms and tuba fix. We have a fantastic professor in Cape Town uh, that's working on selling uh, healthy and safe frozen foods, uh, Professor Dirk Belstead, but we otherwise don't really feed frozen foods except brine shrimp. I like brine shrimp. Sometimes I spoil my angels and my discus with live mosquito larvae, which is an awesome food. Uh, yeah, we do not have black worms in South Africa or gamarus, but if I could access that, I would have loved to feed that and krill, krill meal or krill meat as well. But I feed frozen foods, dry foods, and uh, um, some live foods of mosquitoes. Filtration, I've got individual filtration. I don't have central filtration systems because um, of biosecurity risks still and in the past few years I was still learning a lot about discus and I still am. So I have internal individual filtration which consists of sponges, biological sponges. I've got internal sumps and I pull off the black cover. I know it looks ugly, but I want to see the condition of the, the filtration. Um, I use a lot of aeration in my setup. I've got, um, I, I like sumps. I use a lot of sumps. I use internal filters. I love Eheim, Eheim internal filters. Do you go on holidays? Yes, I do. I have weekend breakaways and then my dad or my family takes care of my fish. I am ever, ever grateful if it wasn't for them. Um, yeah, it would have been quite tough. So I had some staff at some point looking after my fish, but it's mostly my family that helps me out. So yes, when I do go on holiday, it's normally not longer than five days. What's your favorite thing about this case? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's definitely the mammalian characteristics that stole my heart. The fact that they can parent raise their offspring. I love that. The way they communicate with their fry, with each other. And also the fact that they, uh, they've got a very complex behavior. Discus fish have a very complex behavior. I love to read that and to figure them out. Um, they're quite a challenge. I like the challenge behind them. But I also think it's the fact that they interact with me. I really love that they interact with me, they have the ability of recognizing their owners, um, they hear voices and footsteps, um, yeah, it's just a really elegant high-end fish uh, and the genetics are quite wide, you can manipulate the genetics, but I think overall the variety in colors, the character, the fact that they so round, they're flat but they're round, <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I don't, it's, it's the most beautiful animal that God could have created. Amen. And why I like breeding so much is it's an exceptional honor to take part in creation, to be able to imitate our creator's role of recreating creation or contributing to creating new life. It's a very big honor and it's a big responsibility and it also satisfies my need. I, as Nelis, have an incredible need to nurture things or people, uh, my clients or roses, to care for people, to care for animals, to care for my mom. Uh, I just love nurturing relationships and nurturing uh, things and animals. So it satisfies that need that I have. It makes me happy to give. Some of the happiest people on earth is um, the ones that give. So, yeah. What is your favorite discus train? <laughs> That's 
it's a difficult one because Nelise finds any discus beautiful because it's a discus. That's a fact. Hey, but, man. But, okay, I like turquoise the most probably because it's the strain I fell in love with and we started out with red turquoise or brilliant turquoise. Uh, but I also like white discus because it reminds me of uh, purity. It's a very heavenly look. You know, I like like snow white. Snow white. Also like leopards, like ring leopards. You see, I don't have a favorite strain. I, I like a lot of fish. So, but I think turquoise is a winner and um, snow white. Really like snow white. Um, I really, really got hurt last year. I lost a lot of money and a lot of livestock. Um, but my family has been extremely supportive and also my, my loved ones, they have really been supporting me all the way. So, what is your biggest challenge with discus? I think from a business standpoint, it's getting good quality into a third world country. That is quite tough. Um, to, for us to get good quality into South Africa is not easy. challenge is dealing with diseases and also um, another challenge of mine which is personal is emotional I often get attached to my fish and when the discus die or something happens to them it tends to drag me down it gets to me because I love discus so much it really really gets to me so I am slowly but surely assembling a video some information and making a video on flagellates uh, but because of what happened to me last year, I've really been struggling to, to complete the video and to upload it um, about flangelets. But flangelets is a global problem and I would like to upload that next or sometime this year. Uh, but if there's any suggestions for topics, please drop it in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you again soon. Happy fish keeping! I'll be back. Bye, have a great time.